Let's move on to the introduction to law, excerpts coming from the Law on Obligations and Contracts by De Leon. In its widest and most comprehensive sense, the term law means any rule of action or any system of uniformity. Thus, law in general determines not only the activities of men as rational beings, but also the movements or motions of all objects of creation, whether animate or inanimate. Law may be divided into two general groups. First is law in its strict legal sense, which is promulgated and enforced by the state. And next, we have law in the non-legal sense, which is pr not promulgated and enforced by the state. The first refers to what is known as the state law, while the second includes divine law, natural law, moral law, and physical law. Divine law is the law of religion and faith which concerns itself with the concept of sin as contrasted with crime and salvation. It is formally promulgated by God and revealed or divulged to mankind by means of direct revelation. Natural law may then be defined as the divine inspiration in man of the sense of justice, fairness, and righteousness, not by divine revelation or formal promulgation, but by internal dictates of reason alone. When we talk of moral law, we are speaking of the totality of the norms of good and right conduct growing out of the collective sense of right and wrong of every community. Like here in the Philippines, there are different practices from different local area. In the operation or course of nature, there are uniformities of actions and orders of sequence, which are the physical phenomena that we sense and feel. They are known as the laws of physical science or physical law. Some examples are law of gravity and Newton's laws of motion. Physical law operates on all things, including men, without regard to the use of willpower and intelligence. It is called law only figuratively speaking. The kind of law which particularly concerns individuals in this work is the state law or the law that is promulgated and enforced by the state. This law is also called positive law, municipal law, civil law, or imperative law. It is the law that we refer to when we speak of law in connection with obligations and contracts, marriage, the administration of justice, the conduct of elections, and the entire governmental process itself. The characteristics of law in its specific sense are, first, it is a rule of conduct. Law tells us what shall be done and what shall not be done. As a rule of human conduct, law takes cognizance of external acts only. Second, it is obligatory. Law is considered a positive command imposing a duty to obey and involving a sanction which forces obedience. Third, it is promulgated by legitimate authority. In a democratic country like the Philippines, the legitimate or competent authority is the legislature. Under the Constitution, laws called the statutes are enacted by Congress, which is the name of the legislative branch of our government. Local government units are also empowered to enact ordinances which have the binding force of laws. And lastly, it is of common observance and benefit. Law is intended by man to serve man. It regulates the relations of men to maintain harmony in society and to make order and coexistence possible. Law must, therefore, be observed by all for the benefit of all. The principal sources of law in the Philippines are the following. First, Constitution. With particular reference to the Constitution of the Philippines, it may be defined as the written instrument by which the fundamental powers of the government are established, limited, and defined, and by which these powers are distributed among the several departments for their safe and useful exercise for the benefit of the people. It is often referred to as the fundamental law, or supreme law, 
or highest law of the land because it is promulgated by people themselves, binding on all individual citizens and all agencies of the government. Second, legislation. It consists in the declaration of legal rules by a competent authority. It is the preponderant source of law in the Philippines. Acts passed by the legislature are so-called enacted law or statute law. Legislation includes ordinances enacted by local government units. Third, administrative or executive orders, regulations, and rulings. They are those issued by administrative officials under legislative authority. Administrative rules and regulations are intended to clarify or explain the law and carry into effect its general provisions. Administrative acts are valid only when they are not contrary to the laws and constitution. Fourth, judicial decisions or jurisprudence. The decisions of the courts, particularly the Supreme Court, applying or interpreting the laws of the constitution form part of the legal system of the Philippines. The decisions of a superior court on a point of law are binding on all subordinate courts. This is called the doctrine of precedent or stare decisis. Fifth, custom. It consists of those habits and practices which through long and uninterrupted usage have become acknowledged and approved by society as binding rules of conduct. It has the force of law when recognized and enforced by the state. To the above, may be added principles of justice and equity, decisions of foreign tribunals, opinions of text writers, and religion. They are, however, only supplementary. That is, they are resorted to by the courts in the absence of all other sources. They are, however, not binding on the courts. The methods for classifying law are many. For our purposes, it would be best to consider the main classifications of law. First, as to its purpose. Substantive law, or that portion of the body of law creating, defining, and regulating rights and duties which may be either public or private in character. An example of substantive private law is the law on obligations and contracts. Next, adjective law, or that portion of the body of law prescribing the manner or procedure by which rights may be enforced or their violations redressed. Sometimes, this is called remedial law or procedural law. As to its subject matter, public law or the body of legal rules which regulates the rights and duties arising from the relationship of the state to the people. Private law or the body of rules which regulates the relations of individuals with one another for purely private ends. The law on obligations and contracts comes under this heading because it deals with the rights and obligations of contracting parties only. The state, however, is also involved in private law. It enforces private law but simply as an arbiter and not as a party. The law on obligations and contracts is found in the Republic Act No. 386, otherwise known as the Civil Code of the Philippines. When we speak of civil law, we refer to the law found primarily in our civil code. The civil code of the Philippines is based mainly on the civil code of Spain, which took effect in the Philippines on December 7, 1889. It was approved as a Republic Act No. 386 on June 18, 1949, and took effect on August 30, 1950. It is divided into four books. Book 4 of the civil code deals with the obligations and contracts.